Welcome back. Here's our slime. When we hit play, we can see our slime, but um, nothing, nothing's doing. In order to be able to actually interact with our slime, we're going to have to make it into a battle creature, a battle unit. But rather than put it on this set, uh, this already fairly crowded visualization, all the mesh and materials and stuff, I think it's better if we create a separate object called a slime. And what we'll do is we will put the slime's visualization inside of the slime object. And then we can make this a battle unit, and we can give it like 10 HP, for example. That way it, uh, it can exist as a combat unit in the game world. If we hit play, it doesn't actually pop in anywhere, and that's because our battle system that we have built actually manually takes uh, units uh, allied units. We don't, we don't search for everything. So this slime really has no idea that it has to spawn its own battle status indicator. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new kind of script, which we're going to call a battle status indicator independent controller. Except I'm not uh, quite that foolish. So instead we're going to call it a status... Um, what do we call it? A status... The status controller isn't quite right, because we're going to make this creature responsible for creating its own battle status indicators. And to do that, maybe we'll have a um, battle status pop-up. That's what we'd like. And we're going to just go ahead and add that to the slime. Now what's a battle status pop-up, you might ask? Well, let's open it up and find out. As everyone is surprised to find out, it is nothing. It's empty. But our battle unit, uh, sorry, our battle, this actually contains all of the stuff we're going to need. So let's grab it and paste it. There are a couple of things that we don't need. For example, this heroes count thing, we don't need that because our battle unit is attached. We have something on this that's already a battle unit. So we just say require component type of battle unit. And that means that whenever we try and put a battle status pop-up in, we're guaranteed that there will be a battle unit with HP and MP and all of that stuff already attached. Um, and what we are going to want to do is set this up to be whatever we want it to be. Um, first off, our battle unit isn't Heroes A. It is get component battle unit and after that it's actually pretty much correct the only issue is that this was built to put items inside of a canvas and you might remember that uh, when we have these players oh I uh, can't show you at the moment um, let's let's just finish making it so that this works out. We don't... none of this stuff matters. Oh, that's not it. There we are. Uh, so when we actually create these from from the player's heroes, what we end up with is a set of these objects that are not standalone canvases. They are within a canvas. And that's going to be very important later on as we're doing stacked menus. But this, this is not a camera menu that we're creating. This is a floating thing over the head of the slime. So in order to make that work out, we're going to need to actually create an in-world menu. And uh, that's actually pretty much the same way we created an out-of-world menu. First thing we do is we create a canvas. Well, this beautiful canvas is uh, not anywhere near useful to us. We've got to change it from screen space to world space. And then we've got to shrink it way, way down. And uh, we'll just go ahead and drop it on the slime just so that we can get an idea of it. Oh, uh, width and height. How about 460? And that is the size that we have specified here. So uh, 0.002 is probably too small. Just up it a little bit here. Eh. 
That's probably still too small. There we go. When you are resizing these canvases, definitely make sure to keep all three scalar components um, matched. Even though it doesn't look like you actually need to change this and you could leave it as, say, one, uh, that would really, really screw you over if you ever rotate anything ever. So uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. Uh, what we are going to need to do is this canvas is going to need to be our battle status indicator. So we're going to uh, just create all of the same things that we were going to create before, but we're going to put them in here, and we might as well make it simpler, right? I mean, the player is not going to know how much MP our slime has, unless, unless they know how to use their brain. Um, but we don't need to show everything. All we need to really show is HP, right? So let's go ahead and create ourselves a very simple slider. Uh, and this is, going to, this is going to be our HP slider. As before, what we're going to want to do is delete the handle slide area and disable the slider. Change the disabled color to white. Change the fill color to green. There we go. That looks fine to me. We're going to have to replace it later, but eh, for now it's fine. But um, I'm not a big fan of how it looks uh, just due to the fact that there's no numbers. And I think that it is important for us to have numbers attached here. So let's go ahead and add in a number. We're going to move this over here to the left. Oh, uh, click. Make it black. Change the size to, say, 30. There we go. And we will say 10 out of 10. Now well, let's go ahead and make it something that's not exactly the same as what we're doing. We'll make a 10 out of 1. There, that'll do. And uh, now all we need to do is, on this canvas, uh, first off, we want to add in a canvas controller or canvas group so that we can animate it later. And we also want to make it a battle status indicator. Now, previously, we've got all of these things, name, text, portrait, HP, MP, reference. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're just going to have the slider as the HP slider, but we are going to have to change the way the battle status indicator works a little bit. So we're going to need a little bit more texts. And we're going to have to check and make sure something exists before we use it. Now let's add in our text boxes. <clears throat> and this is a very simple way to make everything work out, uh, depending more on what we do visually. So using this setup, we can create whatever visuals we want. We can create whatever layouts we want. Uh, and all that happens is that this sets whatever we happen to set up. So uh, if we don't have a, an MP bar, that's fine. It doesn't care. If we have some kind of weird circular arrangement where things float and it looks like a gear, that's fine. So this allows us to create whatever sort of visual uh, appeal we would like without having to work too much at keeping it consistent, uh, or changing the code, rather. We don't have to change the code if we change the visuals. Either way, this isn't going to be called canvas. It's going to be called um, enemy battle indicator. And we'll, we'll drop this into our prefabs, like so. And uh, we are going to want to drop that into our battle status pop-up as the prefab we would like to use. But we're not quite done yet 
because uh, although we've got that filled, we're still not putting it in the right spot. So if we hit play and then we pause, um, you can see that our battle status indicator is kind of just randomly put in the middle of nowhere. And that's obviously not going to be any help to anybody. So we're going to have to make it uh, in the right spot. And to do that, we're going to want to have a spot indicator, some place that tells us where to put it, because not every monster is the same height. So we're going to put this, we're going to call this a um, indicator target. And then we can move it up above the slime, like so. And then we can go over into our, ah, here it is. And uh, in our battle status pop-up, we can say bu.transform.parent uh, equals transform, and we can say bu, oh sorry, not sorry, we actually want this to be uh, rect tra public transform uh, indicator target. There we are. So indicator target. And then here we can say uh, bu.transform.localPosition equals vector3.0. And that means that we'll put it inside of the target and we'll put it at the center of the target. But we do have to set the indicator target, like so. So what happened? Why didn't that work? I'm actually not sure. Battle status pop-up, start. Let's just, um... Oh! Uh, we actually want to set the battle statuses, coordinates, and shit. <laughs> we were rearranging the body. That's no good. That was kind of useless. Alright, let's try that again, shall we? So it got put in the right position, but it's not in the right rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to force it to be in the right rotation by saying bu.battlestatus.transform.localrotation um, equals uh, indicator target dot, uh, oh, local rotation. I can just say quaternion.identity. And that means the local rotation should be completely nothing. We, we should be exactly matched to whatever our parent is. But the downside of that is that our parent isn't rotated correctly. So we're going to go ahead and rotate our indicator target 90 degrees, oh, 90 degrees this way. There we go. So that, uh, that ended up being backwards. There we go. So that worked-ish, except for we've got a couple of small issues, like this text not being not working correctly. Uh, and so there is a big question as to whether we remembered to set it. Let's go ahead and pull out our battle status, our enemy battle indicator here, and take a look. Um, uh, do you, do you, do you, do you, oh, see, I forgot to set the text, so. There we go. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of trouble to go through just to get the indicator to pop up, right? Why don't you just move it into the right spot from the get-go? Um, and the reason I'm not moving it into the right spot from the get-go is because we're going to have to point this indicator at the camera when we move the camera around, so I want it mounted on something. Uh, and that'll be very advantageous to us. But you can see that we have a problem where the text doesn't really display very well when we're this far away. We're not going to deal with that today. Uh, this has already been 15 minutes long, so we're going to stop here.